I have a hot take, uh, and this is this is sort of spur of the moment, but I could I think I can back it up, and maybe there's devil's advocates in the room. I think the One Plus Eleven is not only a really good phone, but uh, it's better overall than the Galaxy S twenty three. Better buy. Hear me out. I'll explain. So, <laughs> wait. Hear me out first. Galaxy S twenty three is seven hundred ninety nine dollars. Uh, One Plus Eleven is $699. So what's the difference between those two phones? Because we're very familiar with Samsung's offering. OnePlus kind of in flux, and this is one of their better phones. Um, this phone, the OnePlus that I'm holding now, has a better camera array, has a better battery and battery life, has faster charging, has an arguably better or worse design, depends on how you feel. It has the alert slider. Uh, it has a better screen and it has the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. They both have 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage to start, um, but the OnePlus has a 1440p 120 hertz OLED with a 1000 hertz touch sample rate, which Samsung's base phones have 1080p displays. Uh, it also has a bunch of little things, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 4.0, LPDDRX 5 RAM, UFS 4.0 storage, and it's only missing one thing that the Samsung has, which is wireless charging. And other than that, it's even across the board. 100 bucks less, I think this is the better device. Am yeah. I crazy? I'm gonna let David go on this first. I mean, the wireless charging is, it's annoying to me that wireless charging is always the thing that you take out when you make a cheap, quote unquote, OnePlus. cheaper phone. I can't Classic. agree more. Especially yeah. when they put like Wi-Fi 7 and all this like super bleeding edge stuff in it. It's kind of just strange. Like the wireless charging cables can't cost that much, but. Maybe it was for the design. I think, yeah, I would I would buy that over the Galaxy S23, S23. for sure. Yeah. yeah. I also just don't really love Samsung's UX. So, and their phones are just exceedingly boring to me now, which is part of their strategy, but, yeah, you know. I'll talk about the UX on this phone in a second. We had the review out by the time you're watching this, but Andrew, what do you think? I mean, I think wireless charging, I can't believe they don't have it. OnePlus, like, started doing wireless charging, too, so to take it away again to but be only that, in the pros, though. I mean, they still started doing it, and I don't know. Well, I feel, I've said it a million times, when you're in the wireless charging, once you're in yeah. the ecosystem of it, getting out of it feels like That's true. caveman So if you, Like, yeah. plugging my phone in now feels weird. Right, because you're already in it. Like, if you already yep. use a phone that has wireless charging, it's much harder to, to upgrade to a phone that doesn't have wireless charging. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But if you've never had wireless charging, which maybe a lot of OnePlus customers or a lot of people currently using other $500 phones don't have, maybe, that are older, then true. this is less big of a deal. And that's where they decide to save money. I don't know how much, like, Wi-Fi 7 costs to implement versus Wi-Fi 6. Like, I don't know. Wi-Fi 6E is great, but, like... Am I ever going to notice that this phone has Wi-Fi 7? Probably not. Yeah. So it's like weird that they would they would flex a little bit on those completely intangible, unnoticeable things, but then skip out on like a very noticeable, relatively cheap feature. Yeah. Like wireless charging. They intentionally said they weren't going to make a pro version this time. Well, I bet you they will. I just wonder what would go in a pro version of this phone because it has everything except wireless charging, basically. Yeah, they they kind of pitched this phone to me way back when they introduced it to me weeks ago as like we want to keep it simple. We've had these like pro phones and T phones and other phones in the past. And we want to we just simplify it and just make one flagship. So there is no pro. This is the flagship. It's the One Plus Eleven. So I don't think they're going to make one that also has wireless charging. I think this is their flagship. Six ninety nine pretty good for a flagship, mm -hmm. um, but it's got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it's got the 1440p LTPO, it's got like a really, it's it's very quick, it's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 80 watt charging, Yeah, phenomenal battery life anyway, so I feel like when I do plug it in once in a while, it's great. So yeah, I do miss wireless charging, but it's a really good battery. I'm gonna too. butt in there really quick on that. If we're saying the pro versions are the only one that had wireless charging, but then this is, they're saying this is their flagship, that's mm -hmm. the pro. That is the so top is, level yeah. then, and then it's yeah. not yeah. an excuse to not yeah, have just not, wireless charging anymore. Yeah. It's a. I think it's a bad move. But the pro is eight ninety nine. I'm just saying, it was their top level one. They were okay with wireless charging, so maybe they're going a totally different route now. But like, it they took away wireless charging in it's, my eyes. Maybe it's this is their flagship. Just, they took it away. This is their flagship, but they're just giving up on pro. I think there's other companies that it, did this too. They just gave up on a high-end phone. Like if, Motorola, if they just didn't do the Ultra anymore, they would just have their normal high-end phones and not do a $1,000 phone. It kind of feels like that's what OnePlus did. They had like a tier system and they just got rid of the top tier. Do you know who this feels like? Who? OnePlus. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> is that much. weird to say? Like this feels like the one the one plus one we all loved one plus. I also and I like po- that point but. out. It's it's kind of hilarious that they um <clears throat> they when we gave them the bust of the year award in December, <laughs> they started using that as marketing for this phone. And they tweeted like a couple weeks ago. They were like, "This award is what motivated us to make the OnePlus 11." And it's like, no, this was in development for eight yeah. months before <laughs> yeah. we gave it this award. Say, like, maybe it's a little can't. bit of marketing. They, so when we put out the the smartphone awards, they were the first ones to claim their award. That's got to be the first time the bust of the year is the first one to claim their award. Yeah. But they did. They took their trophy first. Also, a lot of other companies have taken their trophies now, which is cool. But yeah, then now they're going around like tweeting pictures of it. Like, this is the one we're going to defy. Yeah. All right. Cool. Great. Yeah. So this is the response. I mean, I got to say, I mean, the review is going to be out by the time you guys, I think, see this podcast. But it is a really good phone and it does feel like the one plus of the past. That's like undercutting the Samsungs and mm-hmm. iPhones of the world. The cheapest iPhone other than the SE is going to be more expensive than this. The cheapest uh, Samsung flagship is more expensive than this. So... In that sense, it feels like a, a good deal. I did also want to mention my UI quirks okay. that I hate about this phone. They're mm. so subtle, but like this is running that new software that we've seen, you know, Oppo and OnePlus merge together with. Um, one thing that I can do on every single Android phone I use is I can swipe to dismiss notifications left or right. Simple thing. I just go back and forth. I got five notifications, boom, 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 swipe them all away. This phone. You can only swipe to dismiss to the right. If you swipe to the left, it just pulls up settings and does a half swipe. You can't get rid of notifications to the left. That's one thing. The second thing is every single other Android phone that I use, you can use two phones to swipe down and expand a notification. So if I have like six new group me messages or six new Slack messages, I can like swipe down and decide to open the ones in the autofocus Mm -hmm. Slack or the ones in the main Slack. On this one, you can't do that. You have to just tap it and then tap which one you want to get into. You have to tap. You you can't just open the app. So basically before, if I had a group of notifications from GroupMe and I just tapped it, it would just open GroupMe. Mm-hmm. With this one, I tap it, it expands them, and then I have to tap again. So just it's just these little weird gesture things that just make it slightly harder and more annoying to use in my notifications that make me so annoyed with how at that if they just added that one setting where they allow me to actually use notifications the way every other phone works, I would probably daily this phone. I think it's my favorite phone so far of the year. It's pretty early, well, but it's pretty <laughs> sweet. Is wireless charging <laughs> important to you? To me, no. I I am if you give me eighty watt charging, I can live without wireless charging. Like it is a little bit less convenient because I have wireless charging in my car. Uh, but I can deal with the fact that this battery life is so good that I'm fine with not charging in my car, and when I get home, I'll plug in for two minutes, and I'll have a bunch more battery. Mm. So I'm fine with that. I really like it. It's just like that, a couple that's, weird software quirks that bug me so I feel like much. that's so interesting to me. I The only place I don't have wireless charging is my car, mm. and I mean, I plug it in because I'm using Android Auto already, but you that's so weird that you would prefer to not charge in your car and prefer to charge at home. I would mm-hmm. rather charge in the place where I'm like locked into a seat for X amount of time yeah. versus going home when I would rather just have my phone like near me. Yeah, I guess I'm if I'm at home, I'm just kind of around and it doesn't matter as much. But yeah. when I'm in the car, that's a classic battery draining activity where my phone's mm-hmm. full brightness, streaming music, GPS is on, like a bunch of stuff happening. So if it's sitting in the car and it's not charging, that's when I lose the most battery. So if I have a wireless charger in my car, that helps me like keep at least the battery yeah. at the same level so it's not like plummeting. Uh, this one, I just like do all the normal GPS stuff and it takes a small hit out of the battery and it's fine because the battery life is excellent. And then I get home and at some point, if I find a charger, I plug in while I'm in a shower or something and it's all the way back to 90% and it's fine. Hmm. So, you know, there's the, I, I think I talk about this in a lot of uh, phones with fast charging in the review, I'm like, you can either give me a really long battery life or fast charging or convenient charging experience. And if you can kind of do a little bit of both, then I'm happy. So yeah, I, I like this phone. It's just that, that little bit of software quirk and feature is, is what bugs me. But Hi. it's got a lot going for it. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. Um, a quick message for you now that you've made it to the end from the producers, we just wanted to say. Thanks for watching and for listening. And uh, as we usually do, we'll toss it to the guys at the table hosting for the outro. They know it. 
Waveform Podcast is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Roven. We are on the Vox Podcast Network, and our intro outro music is by Vane. So, we wanted clips outro, not the regular outro. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>